Computation has become the cornerstone of scientific discovery in almost every discipline, whether you're talking about large-scale simulations or you're talking about data analysis from large experimental data sets. Are the things we're doing here at Berkeley in quantum mechanics that could be helpful in this context? At UC Berkeley, there's a number of different experimental platforms that we're using to realize the next generation of computers, and these would be quantum computers. These are machines where the bits are no longer semiconductor elements per se, but in fact could be trapped ions, or arrays of atoms in a cold gas, or superconducting elements which behave as artificial atoms. In energy sciences, there's opportunities for these kind of large-scale quantum simulations because we're discovering the quantum in energy transfer. We can then use these techniques for simulation to discover new materials with quantum properties that will enhance uh, energy storage and so on. We can use the computational power to study really challenging problems such as climate change. Berkeley was, was really the birthplace of quantum complexity theory and quantum algorithms in a sense. And in fact, it was possibly the first such quantum computing center. We started the Berkeley Quantum Information and Computation Center in 2003. And this was building on an already strong history of study of quantum complexity, meaning how algorithms, computations scale with the size of the system, if you do them quantumly as opposed to classically. You know, you've got this nice result now for the rate, and there was already great strength here in computer science. And to that, at the time, we then added uh, our strengths in quantum physics, and we're working towards developing quantum computation, quantum simulations, it's a very big application of quantum technology and also applications of these use of these delicate quantum states to uh, making precision measurements, a field that's called quantum metrology. One interesting feature of quantum computing as a discipline is that it really crosses traditional academic departments. So Be Quick is a center that was set up specifically to integrate the efforts going on in different departments here. Here we have a long string of about 20 trapped ions and we can study their quantum motion by selectively eliminating these individual ions with laser light. The long-term goal of our research is actually to implement a quantum computing device Want, uh, to process quantum information and hopefully to implement some algorithms which solve mathematical problems. Another direction of our research is actually to apply those tools we are implementing towards a quantum computer for precision measurements. You know, if you go back to the very beginnings of quantum computing, the very early days, there was this feeling that this would be a field which would help us understand fundamental physics in a completely new way. You know. So the exponential power of quantum systems is a double-edged sword. On the one hand, it leads to all the wonderful things about quantum computers, making them exponentially powerful. But it also means that when we try to understand physical systems, it's exponentially hard. Physicists have really ingenious algorithms by which they've tried to solve some quantum systems. But they can only solve very special kinds of quantum systems this way. We are really exploring whether we can go beyond this and try to tackle the many other classes of systems that we don't know how to, how to solve currently. Another recent change at Berkeley is the huge growth in the experimental physics side of BeQuick. I'm a theoretical physicist, and what I find exciting about quantum computing is that, aside from being an amazing problem in itself, it builds on a lot of the major discoveries in my field over the past almost 100 years. We try to understand the behavior of materials that are used in the experiment. So the behavior of Many solids is fairly simple, but when we start talking about superconductors and other so-called quantum materials, it's very difficult to predict their properties accurately, and that has required a lot of technical development over many years. My own expertise here is the study of complex quantum systems, but now we're seeking to do more than just study and characterize them. We're seeking to attain ultra-fine control and measurement in the presence of the environment, the connections that we need to make to them to do control of them. These are generally classical connections, wires and knobs. And also measure the systems, which is normally a very large perturbation in a quantum system. All right, so. Atoms and photons, the intersection of these two, this is where quantum mechanics began. Nature's atoms don't talk to the atmosphere very strongly. And as such, they live and preserve that quantum coherence for a long period of time. 
whereas circuits with wires and common elements such as resistors and capacitors decay rapidly. So the challenge for us is to engineer those circuits to preserve quantum coherence over long time scales at the level of milliseconds and beyond. And then all of this circuitry right here is also behaving in a pretty quantum mechanical way and we use that to entangle the qubits. One of the real attractions for coming here to Berkeley is really the dynamic atmosphere that's established by having experts in every field. Coupling this together with a set of students who are enthusiastic and hardworking really make this an exciting place to be. Okay, great.